Deputy Chairman, I rise to move that the bill further to amend the Benami Transaction Prohibition Act 1988 as passed by the Lok Sabha be taken into consideration. So just a few words of uh, introduction to explain the bill. The original act was passed in the year 1988. And when it was passed in the year 1988, in substance the act was that if a person <coughs> pays for a particular property and the property is held in some other person's name, it shall be deemed to be a Benami property. There is a prohibition. The property can get confiscated by the state and further that there would be a penal provision for that. Now this bill comprised of nine sections. Now, under this bill, rules have to be framed as to the manner of confiscation, whether conf for confiscation, compensation was payable, not payable, how it had to be operated, the uh, competent authority that would uh, uh, undertake this function, the appeal provision under that, so that the power could be exercised in a reasonable manner. Now, when the matter went to the law ministry, the law ministry was of the opinion that all these are essential to a legislation and these should have been a part of the principal legislation itself. If the entire functioning of a law is to be done through subordinate legislation, then that would be a case of excessive delegation. So the law ministry advised that the bill would require some form of an amendment and therefore the rules under this was not framed. There are judgments of the Supreme Court, at least in two cases, where what constitutes a Benami property, this act was interpreted. But actually no acquisition could take place under this act for the reason that the rules in order to operationalize the act themselves were not framed. In the year 2011, the government uh, brought in amendments to this act itself. And those amendments were to be fitted into the main act. Now, the act was only nine sections. The amendments were over almost 74 or so new clauses were to be added. And one of the reasons why it was felt necessary that you can't have a new act altogether, there was one proposal to have a new act, is that if you have a new act, then the penal provisions in the new act would not be able to apply retrospectively because of Article 20 of the Constitution. <laughs> And because they could not apply retrospectively, uh, all those who have violated the 1988 law would go scot-free. As a result of which, these were amendments which were proposed. The matter went to the standing committee which considered it and finally, the Lok Sabha dissolved and the bill lapsed with the Lok Sabha. The present government again uh, reintroduced this bill. It has been uh, approved by the, considered by the standing committee. Some recommendations have been made. Most of those recommendations I have accepted. There are two key recommendations which we have accepted. And these two key recommendations are, one with regard to the, what are the exceptions to the Benami principle. Now there could be a property owned by a family member in the name of any other family member. That's an exception which was there in the 1988 bill. Or in the case of such organizations like trust, etc., where you hold property in one name, but it is held as a fiduciary capacity to the uh, principal owner. Now, these were the two exceptions. There was a third valid exception which members of the standing committee pointed out that a very large number of properties are technically registered in the name of some other person, but under some arrangement, an agreement to sell, power of attorney. In Delhi, for instance, this practice is uh, prevalent. These properties are effectively transferred to some other person and possession also is given a, and the possession is protected under section 53 capital A of the transfer of property act. Therefore, it should not apply to these transactions because there would be lakhs and lakhs of transactions of this kind. The government has accepted that suggestion. There is one more suggestion that the standing committee had made, which uh, related to known sources of income. That is the phrase used in the uh, original act itself. Uh, in the act amendments that we have proposed that whatever you buy must be from your known sources of income. Now the standing committee felt that the words of income itself are superfluous. 
because there could be cases where somebody has purchased the property not from his income but by taking a loan from a bank or by some other family member contributing to it and therefore the word itself should be known sources and not known sources of income we have accepted those suggestions and with these uh, the sub amendments the bill has already been approved by the lok sabha i commend its uh, okay. acceptance to this honorable house desh ko bachane ki zimmedari main kis par dalu arwani to aap se bhi hai bahut chalu